and hello again and welcome to yet another episode about my Norley Cafe Racer project. And in the last episode we tried to start the bike and didn't get very far and I traced a problem hopefully to the starter motor which was hurting out. And so rather than trying to repair the old starter motor I've now ordered a brand new one. So I've ordered that, it's due any day now and when it arrives we can get it back on the bike and we'll see if uh, that solves the problem. And here we have the starter motor from the XL1000 Ironhead engine in my Norley. And in the last episode, we saw that I had problems starting the bike. And I think I traced the problem to this starter motor. So I took it apart and I found a problem somewhere around here with the wiring. It's all frayed and I think I might have had a short. So rather than trying to rebuild this thing, I thought, sod it, I'll just buy a brand new one. Now, I was quite surprised, I managed to find one in the whole of the UK for sale, which I uh, snapped up, and that arrived today. And here it is in the box it turned up in, and I must say at first I was a bit concerned because this picture here is nothing like the starter motor that I need. But having opened it up, let's just do that now, and once I opened it up, it turned out, fortunately, it was actually the correct model, at least I hope so anyway. And there it is, and it cost me a hundred and... I think £136, but at least I got free delivery. So I think that's great, so let's move that out of the way. And uh, yeah, that looks to be the same one. So now I've got to mount that to the bike and we'll see if it makes any difference. And now, as you can see, I've got that new starter motor bolted to the engine and I've not yet fitted this one-off cover that we made some time ago, which fits something like that, because, I don't know, I think the mount is um, not quite right yet. It uses this little bracket here that goes on there and then it bolts with one bolt to the centre and that's not very secure so what I think I might do is make a new one of these which uses these mounting points from the uh, get-go. Bit of a pain because it took a while to make but anyway never mind. Um, next thing is we're going to see if fitting this new starter motor solves the problem I had trying to start the bike. And since I don't yet have a suitable battery to fit on here I've been using my jump leads from the car. And the good news is that the engine now turns over with that new starter in place. So it was the starter motor all along that was causing me a lot of problems with the wiring and so on. And that's great news. What's not so great news is that I can't actually ride the bike yet because I don't yet have a battery. But I have found a suitably sized battery that will fit in here. That will fit in this space here. And it's made by a company called Anti-Gravity. It's an eight cell battery and it costs 200 pounds. So I've not yet ordered that because I didn't know if there was another problem with the bike um, I didn't want to spend £20 and find I still have problems elsewhere but now I know that the engine turns over I'm not filming that because well it's just turning over um, yeah I can order that and we'll see how the bike goes however there is one more reason why I can't try and start the bike just yet yep. and that's because currently I don't have a working clutch and that's because the slave cylinder here which bolts here was leaking like a sieve. I'd uh, bled the system several times and each time I came back to it it didn't feel right anymore, it was feeling very loose, there was air in the system so in the end I took it off and sure enough it was leaking really badly so I've taken that off and I've ordered a rebuild kit for that um, slave cylinder. The part itself is from a Honda Blackbird would you believe so that's not yet quite arrived so when it does I can rebuild the slave cylinder, get it back on here, bleed the system and hopefully, hopefully I'll have a a working clutch and so there's not much more I can do at the moment until that rebuild kit turns up for the slave and I can afford to buy that battery which costs £200. However I have been thinking about more upgrades to the bike in particular to the rear shocks here because these shocks here on the bike at the moment are made by YSS and they're pretty cheap and cheerful good quality for the price because I think I only paid about £140 for these, which isn't bad at all, um, but they do only offer preload adjustment. There's no adjustment available for uh, damping. So what I really want is a shock, a more modern shock rather, which offers infinite preload and damping adjustment, unlike these. I also want some shocks that maybe have a slightly uh, firmer ride and also that maybe are maybe 10mm or 20mm taller than these, because right now I think the back end is a little bit too low overall on the bike and so with that in mind some time ago I picked up these shocks from Progressive and they're rather lovely they are Progressive remote reservoir shocks 
with adjustable damping and adjustable preload and they're made to fit a Harley like mine and uh, yeah they're also an inch longer which is perfect for my Norley. So why haven't I fitted them? Well because I think they look a bit too modern. Um, what I really want is something that has this kind of performance but look a bit more retro as per my shocks on the bike at the moment. And so I've been looking online to find something suitable. And now here we are looking at my laptop with the four options I've been considering. And first of all, we have K-Tech and they offer three different ranges. First of all, it's one called Bullet, which have no visible springs. Don't like that, so they're out. Next is Razor, which have remote reservoirs, which again, uh, no good for me because I've already got shocks like that and they're too modern. And last of all, one called Razor Lite, and they're the ones that I've been looking at. So let's just go in there and let's have a look at them. And sure enough, they have spring preload, remote damping, adjustable height, and dice finish and so on. Nothing wrong with that. And you can have options for spring rate so I can get the bike set up just right for the weight of myself and the bike, of course. Um, yeah, so pretty nice. But I'm not sure about the all black finish and uh, yeah, it's very modern, might look good on a modern bike, but for my bike, I think I want a bit more chrome maybe, something a bit more retro. So moving on then, we come to Nitron. Oh, by the way, these shocks are all about the same price. I mean, this is about £600 or thereabouts for a dealer. And next up we have Nitron and they've got some recent shocks and they call theirs NTR R1 twin shocks. And obviously it's got those horrible blue springs, but they can be changed again. Um, hard anodized body, adjustable uh, for preload and also for uh, compression rebound damping uh, and so on and so on. Nothing wrong with that. And we go down to the options and where are we? Da -da 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 -da. And they have three options here. One's called standard, one's called classic and one's called stealth mode. So I'm not sure if we can see those on here. Let's have a look. Like, so. Again, they have different lengths, that's fine. But to have a black version, not good to me. A titanium and blue version. Let's click on there. There it is. That's not good to me either. I mean, very bright blue that. I'm not sure why they picked that particular colour. But they also do one called titanium and black. So that was the one that I was more intrigued by. And again, it's pretty damn similar to the uh, Razor Lights. They do the same sort of thing, same sort of cost. It's a 600, the razor light's about 570, something like that. So yeah, not bad, not bad. Perhaps a bit dull though, would like to have maybe some chrome bodies or something like that to match the age of the bike. So moving on then, we can get to Max Suspension, well-known local company, not too far from me. And they do some called the 280 Twin Shocks. Now, again, pretty cool. Then Max are kind of like, you know, they are the top level you can get anything you want from these guys, they'll um, tailor the shocks to your weight and the type of riding you do and the weight of the bike and so on. And so that would be a great shock for performance. And in fact, they're not too far away from me, only about five miles away, so that's not too bad. But sadly, I think I don't like the look of them. Again, they look okay on a modern twin shot bike, like a Triumph maybe, but on my bike, no. Also, there's no indication on here of the price. You have to apply and fill in a, uh, a sort of application form before you get back a reply about the price. So I'm pretty sure it'd be quite expensive. And so I've also found the final option from Hagen, who I've always considered to make kind of cheap and cheerful shocks, nothing too fancy, but as it turns out, but as it turns out, they've improved a lot over the years and they now offer something called a nitro stainless steel shock, this last one here. And I quite like it. It's, um, yeah, let me see if I can blow it up a little bit. Can we see a bigger picture? And what I like is, it's quite retro looking, but it's got a stainless steel body, a stainless steel spring. You've got a 10 position damping adjustment and also, of course, adjustment for um, preload. And again, a UK based company, I can call them up and I can get the spring rate and the length that I need. So I'm actually quite impressed with this. It's also the cheapest at £379 and 50p. Now Hagen are gonna have a stand at the Classic Bike Show in Stafford at the end of April. And that's the show I always attend. So I'm going to go down there, I'm going to find their stand and have a good chat with their reps and find out everything I need to know. And hopefully I can order the shocks I need there and then and uh, away we'll go. 
So yeah, I'm quite impressed with those. I just wish I could find you a bigger picture. Can we click on that? Will it work? Oh, okay. Let's make that a bit bigger. There we go. Yeah, pretty nice, isn't it? So um, yeah, stainless steel bodies, stainless steel springs, adjustable damping at the base there. You know, great. And I'm sure their real world performance will be pretty similar to the KTEC, the Nitron, or indeed the Maxton, while being cheaper. Now perhaps they're 10% not as good, but on my bike that makes what, 60, 65 brake horsepower, I'm sure there'll be more than enough for me. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go for that particular set and uh, I shall be ordering them at the end of April. Okay, well, I filmed that first section of the video last week and now I've been to the Big Stafford Classic Bike Show and I've had a good chat with the rep on the Hagen stand and had a look at all these different shocks that they sell. Um, I picked this leaflet while I was there and the, make sure that's in line, the shock I was interested in was the Nitro, that's one of these here. And I'm so glad I went to look at it because it's not suitable, no way. It's far too wide, it's, this coil I believe is uh, 73 millimeters in diameter, where standard ones are about 50, so it sort of looks like a big fat monoshock shock. And that's not the look I want to go for on my Norley. Now I'm sure it might work very, very well, and it looked to be very well made. Um, although the rep did say that because it is so wide, they sometimes get issues with clearance um, problems, say on a chain guard or on a wheel or something like that. I don't think that'll be a problem on my bike, but um, it's something to be wary of if you're looking at buying a shop like this with such a wide spring. So that's off the table. And at £400 almost, that's a good saving for me. I would hate to have bought it and found I didn't like it. They also do this shock here, which is a lot simpler and um, a lot cheaper. It's like half the price. It's £200. And it also has adjustable damping. And I did ask, and they did say that, although it doesn't um, show it on the website or on here, they can build you a shock, say with the chromed or silver, body but with a black spring rather than this chrome spring here now these nitrous oh, sorry nitro shocks are built from stainless steel but these aren't these have chrome springs and obviously chrome bodies so obviously that's why they're a lot cheaper um, and i must say they did look a little less well made a little less well finished than these more expensive shocks but then again you get what you pay for i'm not sure yet if i want to go with these even with the um the black springs so the uh, the search continues and I'll keep looking until I find something that I like um, and when I do I'll let you know and uh, we'll continue with this video at that time um, but first I think I need to uh, get the down bike running well before I start spending four or five hundred pounds on the rear shocks but that said I am so glad I actually went to the show and handled these shocks in person rather than relying on pictures on the internet because it really does give you a different impression of seeing these things in real life than on the uh, computer. But anyway, the search continues. That's off the list, but maybe one of these with the black springs may well do the job. We'll see. So anyway, when I actually decide what I'm going to buy and get them bought and get them on the bike, I'll make another video about all that. But for now, thanks for watching and cheers.